Hello students, now we are well and truly into this investment unit and today we're going to talk about how to actually purchase those investments. So first of all, you want to get a stable income. You shouldn't be investing uh, beyond any sort of automatic investment from your job until you have a really consistent stable income and very importantly you've saved up money in your emergency fund at least three to six months worth of expenses in your emergency fund if you don't have that then any of these unexpected expenses that come along might just be worth more to you than any of the investments that you've made so you want to make sure you have that set up first uh, then once you've done that you want to start putting your money into the investments that are going to give you the most bang for your buck. For example, if you have a job that offers you a 401k or 403b plan, that means that your job is likely going to match a certain amount of money that you put in there. So you're getting double the amount of money up to a certain amount, and that means that that's a much better investment for you. It's rare out there in the world that you will earn so much investing as you do when you take those opportunities. So and then the last thing you want to do is save up money to invest in chunks into a different investment products. So you can have this diversified portfolio, which is what we talked about last time in terms of the risk versus the reward. And we'll get more into that later. Okay, but the key question for this section is, like, how do you actually buy stuff? Because stocks are out there in particular stock markets and those are in different places in the world and um, you're just an average person, so what are you supposed to do about that? Well, there are companies whose entire business it is to be the connection between you, a buyer, and a seller of a stock or bond, and they're called brokerages. A broker is any person that connects buyers and sellers or lenders and, and borrowers, and it's their whole job just to help buy and sell stocks. Now, the way they make their money, because everybody's out to make money in this industry, is that they get a commission fee every time you buy and sell. Um, you have two options. There are face-to-face -face brokers, and those are actual human people who help you buy stocks. And there are a whole bunch of different terms for these sorts of folks, and lots of different jobs do this. Uh, but you can also use online investment services, and you can buy and sell stocks that way on your own. And sometimes those online investment services cost you less overall than working with an individual person. Here are the key players in this market of buying and selling and trading stocks and bonds. There's those brokers that we already talked about. Um, they're also known as financial consultants slash advisors or wealth advisors, and they charge you a little bit every time you buy and sell. The danger there is every time you buy and sell, if you lose a little bit of money paying them, that's money that's not going to get compounded over time. Remember, compound um, interest in savings is really important. Well, that's also true in investment. Um, as your money would ideally grow over time in these different investment options. Uh, investment banks, these are not people necessarily to help you buy and sell stocks, but they're actually people competing against you. So there are these huge, massive institutions who just do all this buying and selling and trading of stocks, and that's how they make their money. So one important thing to know is that you're competing against very, very wealthy institutions with very, very smart people that they can pay a lot of money to do the thing that you want to do. So don't get too big ahead about investing in stocks and bonds because you're competing against a lot of other people. And then you are likely an individual investor. Those are people who've saved enough money or potentially borrowed money, more dangerously, to invest. And they're the ones who use brokerages. And then finally, where all these people meet is on the stock market. You can think of it as like the game playing field in a sport, a place where all of these different groups come together to compete with the ultimate goal of making money. Here's a key piece of warning. A broker is not a financial planner in the sense that they're required to give you the best advice about uh, what you should invest in for you. They're in the industry to make money. So uh, there's been some argument in the government about the fiduciary rule, the requirement that certain people in the finance industry um, put the needs of their customers first when investing money, uh, but that's not clearly going to be in place or be available. So you want to ask your financial advisors, financial planners, how much are they required to do what's best for you and not what's best for their commission. So when buying and selling a stock or bond, one of my main pieces of advice is learn from the people who actually know how to do it. And the nice thing is out there, there's actually a lot of different options, including going to WikiHow, which I really like. So they're about to give you a whole bunch of advice that I would give you, particularly be in school and learn about the stock market, what you're doing right now. Good job.
and learn the key vocabulary words, which you're doing right now. Good job. And then the first thing they advise you to do is look into buying a mutual fund because a mutual fund is kind of like getting an investment bank on your side because they take your money and they pool your money to get a lot of other people's money and then they invest it for you and they more know what they are doing than you would know investing in individual stock purchases. Here's the thing though, if you'd like to buy individual stocks, and you can, it is riskier, but there's also the potential for reward, you wanna make sure you do your research first. And you could go to companies' websites to learn that. There are also websites like Morningstar.com um, that take information from multiple companies, put it together and give you some context. There's also you know, entire television shows and YouTube channels that are all about finding information about stocks and bonds. Uh, you wanna search for particular companies. If again, you're gonna invest in an individual stock, which is riskier, and you wanna make use of reliable resources like the Wall Street Journal or Investors Business Daily. You wanna choose businesses that consistently perform well over time. Past performance is not in an indicator of future performance, but you certainly don't want to pick a company you have no idea about. You want to think in terms of actual value uh, because one of the most common ways to value a stock is the ratio of the value of that stock to how much money the company actually makes in profit. And that could give you a sense of is this company actually doing well or are people just kind of going gaga about like, ooh, it's a really new cool company like when Snapchat first um, issued its initial public offering. Um, so you wanna make sure that you're investing in a reliable investment and not just sort of following a whole bunch of other sheep into a terrible purchase. Uh, once you've investigated that stock, you wanna see if you can buy it directly from the company because that's in the primary market and that can be very, very valuable to you, particularly getting in on initial public offerings that look to do pretty well. Um, if you can't do that though, uh, you may have to go and buy it from some other investor who bought it you know, some time ago. Then you choose your broker. You know, I consider what kinds of brokers to use. Uh, you open a brokerage account and you deposit funds with them, which is something you're doing in our game right now. Um, and then once you've done that, you can actually buy and sell your stocks. But again, the tricky part is you have to go through someone else to do this. And I think, yeah, that can definitely be tricky. Let's get back to the PowerPoint. The last thing we're going to talk about today is how does investing in mutual funds actually work, right? You got advice in that WikiHow article about investing in mutual funds first because it's a more reliable way for individuals to invest. So. Here's what you wanna think about for yourself. What are your goals? How comfortable are you with risk? If you're a younger person, you should be more comfortable with risk because over time, these risks mellow out in terms of the stock market. So if you have a lot of time left to invest, say like 50 years before you retire, then you actually want riskier investments because you have time to recover, but not so risky that you'll lose all your money. That's my main advice to you. Uh, so you wanna choose a type of mutual fund that serves your goals. Uh, there's an income producing mutual fund called an income fund. So if you're closer to retirement or you're you know, not as comfortable with risk like me, then you probably wanna do something like an income fund. Uh, but regardless of what kind of fund you go for, here's what you wanna look for. You wanna look for a low management expense ratio. That means that compared to the amount of money they spend actually using your stocks and you know, moving stocks and bonds around and making money for you. You want to look for them paying as little money as possible towards the cost of daily running their business. And the reason is every little chunk that they take out of what you've invested is less money you have to invest back into this mutual fund, which could earn you more and more money over time. And it compounds on itself. So the less money they spend on their own company, the mutual fund company, then the more money you get in your investment. And you also want to look at past performance of mutual funds. But again, past performance does not always indicate future success. And the current advice from a lot of financial advisors is you want to use something uh, called an index fund, which hardly does any active management of your stocks and bonds at all. And they just invest broadly into the entire stock market. And as the market goes up, yours goes up. And as the market goes down, yours goes down. But Historically, on average, the market has gone up over time in a way that will earn you a fair amount of money very safely.